many occasions spoke about the uh, pastor here at St. Anthony's. Uh, um, uh, how long had he been here? Well, the, the, uh, the most uh, renowned pastor of St. Anthony's is the Reverend Monsignor, right Reverend Monsignor Cornelius Lally. He was born in Adair, Iowa. He was appointed here in 1928 <coughs> and lasted until 1955. Mm. So he was here 30-some years, or 29 years or whatever, however it is. Um, he uh, built this church. He built the school. Uh, uh, or I shouldn't say built the school, built a convent. Okay. And prepared for the building of the school, the new school. Uh, did wonderful work with the people, many of them immigrants. Was loved, beloved by so many, and feared by many too. <laughs> he was kind of old style pastor, kind of stern, but the people, the old timers, still talk about him. Mm. Father Lally. He was an interesting guy. He had a wig. Really? Yeah. He, uh, sorry, John. He lost, <laughs> he lost his hair and he decided to wear a wig and, and uh, he bought a cheap wig. I guess he was kind of t on the tight side and it didn't fit very well. It kind of stuck out in the back, you know. And, uh, he, it was red. I guess his hair was red. He was an Irishman, and, mm -hmm. and the wig was a terrible red. And, and if he sweat, he'd just pull it out and take his handkerchief and wipe his hair and, light, and put his wig back like it was a hat. And then during Mass, sometimes it would fall off, and the older boy would have to retrieve it. And it was just it was, uh, it was uh, uh, something that a lot of people talk about to this day, Father Lally's wig. But he was a character. You know, a lot of these pastors who stayed in these parishes for a long time, were characters. Mm -hmm. They weren't perfect, and people will readily admit that, but they were beloved. They were part of the family. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things you miss when you move around, mm -hmm. is uh, that sense of, you know, we're family, and even though we find, we see the glaring flaws in this individual, we accept him for who he is mm -hmm. because he's our father. He's our, our pastor, and, he's, and he is who God has, has sent us, and, and uh, we see through the flaws to the good things about him. Mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, what is the process that the diocese uses to determine uh, where priests are assigned? Uh, do you post for, you know, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of it from a, a lay perspective, you know, where well, you try and go for jobs and stuff like that. There's an opportunity. Uh, the bishop will put out these, these openings, and you can tell the bishop you're interested in going to one of these. And you, sometimes you can put down two. Mm -hmm three, for that matter, that you'd like one of these to be your choices, then the bishop examines that and looks at the whole picture and makes the final determination after consulting with what is called the personnel board, the group of priests who've been elected as representatives who the bishop, with whom the bishop consults about the prudence and appropriateness of this assignment or that, mm -hmm. and then the bishop is ultimately the one who decides. Mm. So that's the way it is. So, so when they're looking at that, uh, you said they look at the individual. Are there certain men that, uh, like for example, St. Francis of Assisi, let's say, is coming up, a big, huge uh, parish. Uh, are there certain uh, men that it's like, oh, that I think uh, fa that father would uh, um, have a very difficult time with that particular assignment. That's that's not where their gifts lies. This huge, big yeah. parish. There, they they might do a great job with multiple parishes in a smaller community, but having this big, huge thing would be something that would be too uh, terribly imposing on people. On him. Yeah, the board, the personnel board, with with the bishop would would look at the parish and the individuals who p applied for it and say which one's the best fit mm -hmm. and how would, how would this match and how does this fit into the grand scheme of things. And you would you would choose a man that that fit uh, the qualifications for this parish, a big parish with a huge school, a big debt, and so forth would require someone who probably knew a little bit about a little bit more about finance and fundraising, and and strong leadership and those kinds of skills. Whereas a smaller parish you could take a person who is maybe a little more laid back, you know, with mm -hmm. with. Uh, with uh, not the energy, maybe, maybe an older fellow, uh, without the person who doesn't have quite the, the skill set to meet the demands of a huge parish. He'd go somewhere else. Okay, okay. Now, um, I'll tell you how I got St. John's. Oh, okay. You want to hear I was, that one? I, I'd love to hear that one. I was going to ask a different question, but that's a great one. 
when I was on the personnel board, see, and uh, I got elected to the personnel board in, in early 80s, so I served it when I was on the personnel board when I was down in Leon and Sheridan. Well, <coughs> I, my term basically was coming up uh, uh, down in Sheraton, although I was I had two more years, but I, I was ready to move. And I told the personnel board and the bishop that although I'd only been there five years, I was ready to move, uh, anxious to get a larger parish. And so at that time, visitation was open, St. John's, or those are the only two I can remember. And uh, some people thought I should go to visitation. And I, I kind of was interested in visitation, but something kept pulling me to St. John's. And uh, I finally said, well, I like to go to St. John's, and, and uh, that's what happened. But uh, it's interesting, you know, you, I, I was part of the process that determined where I would go. So <laughs> they didn't dismiss me from the room either. So I was in there to kind of do my own politicking for, for St. John's and, and, uh, and got it. And uh, in, in all my 33 years, that's the only assignment I got that I actually asked for. <laughs> and that was because I was on the board to determine who was going where. See, oftentimes you don't get what you ask for. Mm -hmm. When I was ordained, I asked for St. Joe's. I went to, I got assigned to, uh, to Christ the King. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Dowling. I got to Saint, I got sent to St. Albert's. I asked for anything but Leon, and they sent me to Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Leon Ministry, uh, and that was a great ministry yeah, for you, wasn't it? That was all of these. I was going to say, then fr from there, I went to St. John's because I orchestrated it. And then from St. John's, I didn't know where I was going and ended up in Omaha. Mm -hmm. And from Omaha, I wanted to come back to St. Ambrose Cathedral and I went to Holy Trinity. And before I was done with Holy Trinity, the bishop said, you're going to St. Anthony. <laughs> so the only assignment I ever got was the one I engineered. <laughs> but you know, every one of them has a blessing. That's what I want to say. Every one of them has a blessing to it. Every one of them was good. Mm -hmm. Every one of them I loved and every one of them I appreciated the people. And, uh, and I have many blessings from each of those assignments. But all of them, and every one of them, uh, w was an assignment I didn't ask for. Mm. And I had to go out of obedience in a, a sense that I could trust that somehow God would be there for me in this mm -hmm. new assignment. And he was, every assignment. And every one of them uh, has its own unique blessings and uh, memories. And uh, I, I treasure every single one of them. You know, um, now one thing that you and your parochial vicar here at St. Anthony's share is uh, you both have been pastors at, in Leon. Mm -hmm. That's right. We were uh, both on the Le in the Leon uh, ministry. Uh, both of us loved Leon very, very much. That was my first pastor. And uh, gosh, you know, parishes are different. There's like different personalities to every parish. 